Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to the extraordinary meeting of the unit holders of Embassy REIT. I would now like to introduce your host for today's meeting, Mr. Ritwik Bhattacharji, Head of Capital Markets and Investor Relations of Embassy REIT. Sir, you may now begin. Thank you, Operator. Welcome, everyone, to the extraordinary meeting of the unit holders of Embassy REIT. Embassy REIT is pleased to announce its proposed acquisition of Embassy Tech Village, a 9.2 million square foot integrated office park located on Outering Road in Bengaluru, India's best performing office sub market. Embassy REIT is purchasing the Embassy Tech Village assets for a total enterprise value of 97.8 billion rupees or 1.3 billion US dollars. We have called this extraordinary meeting to vote on the following resolutions to consider and approve the ETV acquisition for an enterprise value of 97.8 billion rupees, to consider and grant authority to borrow up to 35% of the gross asset value of the embassy REIT and matters related thereto, to consider and approve the raising of funds through an institutional placement or placements of units of embassy REIT not exceeding 80 billion rupees in one or more placements, and to consider and approve a preferential issue of up to 65,579,400 units of embassy REIT at a price of 356.7 rupees per unit. The video conferencing facility enabling this extraordinary meeting had opened 15 minutes prior to the scheduled time and will be available for 15 minutes after the scheduled period ends. Unit holders can use this facility on a first come first serve basis to join the meeting. Embassy REIT is also hosting this extraordinary meeting live on its website. To ensure the satisfactory participation in the extraordinary meeting, we encourage all unit holders to refer to the instructions provided in the notice convening the meeting or to the instructions that appear on the video conference page. In case unit holders face any difficulty, they may reach out on the helpline numbers provided on the video conference page. After the extraordinary meeting proceedings, the NSDL portal will remain open for 15 minutes to enable unit holders to cast their e-votes. Also, Unit holders who wish to express their views or ask any query may do so in the chat box enabled on their screens by clicking on the communicate tab. Unit holders will need to mention their full name along with their DP ID and client ID or their folio number as the case may be along with their questions. A relevant person from the manager shall answer your query during the meeting. Now, let me take the opportunity to introduce you to the board of directors joining the, the meeting. To the directors, please show your hand when your name is called. Mr. Anuj Puri is an independent director on the board and the chairperson of the investment committee of the manager of Embassy REIT. He is a fellow of the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors and a fellow of the Indian Institute of Insurance Surveyors and Loss Assessors. He holds the title of Chartered Insurance Practitioner from the Chartered Insurance Institute. Mr. Vivek Mehra is an independent director on the board and the chairperson of the audit committee of the manager of Embassy REIT. He was with PricewaterhouseCoopers for 19 years and he retired as a partner in 2016. Dr. Ranjan Pai is an independent director on the board and the chairperson of the Nomination and Remuneration Committee of the Manager of Embassy REIT. He is the chairman of the Manipal Group of Companies. Dr. Punita Kumar Sinha is an independent director on the board and the chairperson of the Stakeholder Relationship Committee of the Manager of Embassy REIT. She is the founder of Pacific Paradigm Advisors LLC. Previously, she was the CIO of the India Fund and the Asia Tigers Fund Inc. She was also a portfolio manager at Oppenheimer Asset Management. The board also comprises of Mr. Jitu Birwani, the chairman and managing director of the Embassy Group of Companies, with over 25 years of experience in the real estate and property development sector. Mr. Aditya Birwani, the chief operating officer of Embassy Group. Mr. Robert Christopher Hedy, the head of Real Estate Asia for Blackstone. And Mr. Thuin Parikh, head of Blackstone's real estate operations in India. All of these non-executive directors on the board of the manager of Embassy REIT have recused themselves from this extraordinary meeting. Also, given the related party nature of the proposed ETB transaction, as the chair of the investment committee, Mr. Anush Puri has agreed to act as the chairman of this extraordinary meeting. The management team of Embassy REIT also joins us for this meeting. We have with us Mr. Michael Holland, the chief executive officer, Mr. Vikash Kadloya, the deputy chief executive officer and chief operating officer, Mr. Arvind Maya, the Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Sachin Shah, the Chief Investment Officer, and Ms. Deepika Srivastava, the Company Secretary and the Compliance Officer. The following key persons are also attending the meeting. Mr. Anil Grover, Ms. Mangal Gauri Bhatt, and Ms. Shreya Singhal, 
the representatives of Axi Trust, Access Trustee Services Limited, the trustee to Embassy Reed, Mr. Adesh Ranka, the partner, and Ms. Mr. Nikun Shah, the director representing SR Bhatli Boy and Associates LLP, the statutory auditors of Embassy Reed, and Ms. Rupal Jaberi, the practicing company secretary, who is present here as a scrutinizer of the meeting. With this, I now hand over the meeting proceedings to the chairman for today's meeting, Mr. Anuj Puri. Over to you, Anuj. Thank you very much, uh, Ritwik. Uh, to all the unit holders, a very good morning. Uh, welcome to this uh, extraordinary meeting of the unit holders of Embassy REIT. On behalf of the board of directors of uh, Embassy REIT, thank you very much for taking the time to join us this morning. I hope you are all safe and in good health. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic concerns and uh, social distancing norms, we are holding this uh, extraordinary meeting through video conferencing in accordance with the SEBI guidelines. Since we have the requisite quorum present through video conference to conduct the proceedings of this meeting, I call the meeting to order. Our board of directors are joining us on this call from various locations. Before we start the main proceedings of the meeting, I would request my colleagues on the video conference to introduce themselves along with details of the location from which they are joining the meeting. Vivek Mehra. Hi Vivek. Let, let me move on to uh, Dr. Ranjan Pai. Good morning, uh, unit holders. I'm uh, Dr. Ranjan Pai, an independent director on the board and chairperson of the Nominations and Remunerations Committee of the manager of the Embassy Office Park Street. I'm attending this extraordinary general meeting from my home in Manipal. I think uh, we make you are back. Can you please introduce yourself and the location from where you're taking this meeting? Sorry, it uh, appears uh, Vivek's line, um, uh, the connection is uh, not, not uh, very conducive. Uh, let, me, let me go to Dr. Punita Kumar Sena. Punita, over to you. Good morning, unit holders. I'm Punita Kumar Sena, an independent director on the board of MC uh, Office Parks and chairperson of the Stakeholders Relationship Committee of the manager of MC Office Parks Reed. I'm attending the extra extraordinary meeting from Boston. On behalf of uh, Vivek, I will introduce uh, him. Uh, he is uh, an independent director on the board and chairperson of the audit committee of the manager of Embassy REIT. And uh, he is attending this uh, extraordinary meeting uh, from Delhi. Given that uh, this qualifies as a related party, and Ritu had mentioned this earlier, the nominees of the two sponsors, namely Jitu Birmani and Aditya Birmani from the Embassy Group, and Robert Christopher Hedy and Tuhin Parekh from the Blackstone have recused themselves from joining this meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to seek your approval on the matters stated in the extraordinary meeting notice dated 17th November 2020. As you may recall, in November 2019, Embassy REIT had received a ROFO invitation from Embassy sponsor with respect to Embassy Tech Village, or as we call it as ETV. It's a large scale, very high quality campus styled business park in a key submarket of Bangalore. Given the uncertain environment earlier in the year due to the pandemic, the REIT manager had paused the assessment on this potential acquisition in order to reach a level of comfort against a number of additional criteria, such as impact on occupier businesses, occupiers and their leasing sentiment, rent collections during the pandemic time, direction of the pandemic, and market conditions amongst various other factors. 
The manager has reported that they have reached a level of confidence against these criteria and have concluded their analysis of the ETV opportunity. On November 17, 2020, the independent directors of the Investment and Audit Committee of the board, as well as the board of the manager to Embassy Re approved the ETV acquisition subject to requisite unrelated unit holder confirmation and other approvals. Apart from the resolution for the ETV acquisition, the said extraordinary meeting notice also refers to other proposed resolutions to borrowing limits, institutional placement, and preferential allotment as referred earlier by Rithwick. I would now request Michael Holland, the CEO of Embassy REIT, to take us all through the acquisition rationale and other details. Over to you, Mike. Thank you, Anuj. Um, and I see that Vivek is back online. I, I, I wonder, can we just confirm his presence? Apologies that we're having some technical hiccups. Can you hear us, Vivek? Mr. Mira, you need to unmute your line. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good. Then I, I'll then I'll proceed. So thank you very much, Anuj, um, and. Uh, Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining today's uh, meeting online from uh, many different parts of India and around the world. Um, when Embassy REIT listed in April 2019, the appeal of the REIT to investors was the large scale, high quality, diversified office portfolio, a predictable and growing net operating income generated from over 160 blue chip, largely international occupiers and organic growth coming from contracted rental escalations, embedded mark to market on releases and accretive on campus development. And Embassy REIT has performed strongly on all these organic growth levers. Since listing, we've leased 2.7 million square feet area We've achieved a 45% mark to market spread on 1.4 million square feet of releases, delivered 1.4 million square feet on campus development with 60% already pre-committed. And we've launched a further 2.7 million square feet of new development. During this period, we've distributed 27.6 billion rupees or approximately 372 million US to our unit holders. And consequently, we've delivered a total return of 25% as of November 9, 2020, outperforming key global and domestic benchmark indices. In addition to our organic growth levers, we had also identified the potential for accretive growth through inorganic acquisitions supported by our strong balance sheet and existing low leverage. And in this regard, on November 17, 2020, we announced a unique transaction to acquire a best-in-class asset, ETV, uh, by the REIT under the ROFO agreement with Embassy Sponsor. Now, with your permission, we will play a short video to introduce you to the Embassy Tech Village asset. Located at the heart of the technology corridor of Bangalore, Embassy Tech Village is a best-in-class 80-plus acres office park with 6.1 million square feet completed and leased to a 97% plus occupancy. Embassy Tech Village is a large-scale infrastructure-like park that serves as a complete business ecosystem 
to its 40 plus blue chip tenants and is home to an estimated working population of over 45,000 people. Embassy Tech Village, with a 9.7 year whale and the potential for 33.7% mark to market rental opportunity, has outperformed the Bangalore market with a 9.2% rental CAGR since 2014. Embassy Tech Village offers best-in-class office spaces with state-of-the-art amenities, campus-style development for a total business ecosystem, three-level safety and security systems, multiple food courts, fitness centers and sports arenas, on-site medical facilities, and on-campus crash. Renewable Energy and IGBC Platinum Green Campus Certification and year-round tenant engagement activities. Embassy Tech Village is constantly redefining the total business ecosystem concept to build a superior work environment for its corporate occupiers and their employees. With a proposed metro station for better connectivity, Skywalk for pedestrian convenience and safety, integrated pedestrian network and landscaping, 3.1 million square feet of under construction leasable area, and proposed 518 keys business hotels. Embassy Tech Village is a large scale business park strategically located in the highest absorption submarket in India's best performing office market. With its international occupiers and complete business ecosystem, we believe Embassy Tech Village will remain a location of choice for the world's best companies for years to come. Embassy Tech Village, Bangalore, where the world comes to work. Over to you, Mike. Thank you. We view the ETV acquisition as a very compelling opportunity for a number of reasons. First, the asset is a best-in-class infrastructure-like office park with a marquee international occupier base, stable long-term cash flows, and strong embedded growth. ETV comprises 6.1 million square feet of completed and income-producing offices, 97.3% leased, with 3.1 million square feet of under construction on campus development, of which 36% is already pre leased, and a proposed development of 518 key dual branded Hilton and Hilton Garden Inn hotels. It also has the benefit of a planned metro station at the park entrance. ETV is an integrated office, spark, office park spread over 84 acres with robust infrastructure in terms of power, safety and security, numerous employee amenities, including crash, multiple sports amenities, including crash, multiple sports facilities and food courts, co-working facilities, medical center and so on. At the heart of the park are landscaped open spaces and breakout zones for over 45,000 employees of the 40 plus occupiers who work from the park today. At an asset level, ETV has a diversified occupier base and derives 88% of its gross rentals from multinational occupiers and 48% of the gross rentals from Fortune 500 companies. Existing occupiers at ETV include Cisco and Software AG from the technology sector, Great West Financial and JP Morgan from the financial services sector, Flipkart and Swiggy from e-commerce, and numerous other globally recognized companies such as Sony, Eli Lilly, Telstra, and Moody's. This occupier base reinforces quality and increases the diversity of Embassy REIT's occupier profile, particularly in the financial services and e-commerce segments. Second, the acquisition will strengthen Embassy REIT's presence in India's leading office market. Bangalore is the largest and strongest office market in India, accounting for 25% or 165 million square feet of the pan-India grade A stock, 
while representing 30% of pan-India absorption, an average of 14.2 million square feet per annum over the past six years. Notwithstanding COVID-19-induced delays in decision-making this year, Bangalore has seen 7.1 million square feet absorption year-to-date, 29% of pan-India year-to-date absorption. This asset will deepen our strategic presence in Bangalore and will provide us with a unique presence in a third and Bangalore's largest sub-market, ORR, highly complementary to our existing presence in the North and CBD sub-markets. ORR is the largest office sub-market in India with a 54 million square feet office stock. In fact, over the past 6.5 years, ORR sub-market has absorbed more office space than any one of cities like Shanghai or New York, Hong Kong or London. It is a sub-market which has witnessed an 8.8% CAGR in rentals since 2014, and given its continuing appeal to marquee occupiers, this sub-market is currently running at a 2% vacancy. The opportunity to add new product in such a supply-constrained sub-market gives ETV further competitive advantage for the midterm. This ORR sub-market is home to global captive centers for corporations such as Goldman Sachs, Northern Trust, Intel, Adobe, Oracle, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and many more, with over 650,000 people working in this sub-market. So in one of the most active office markets in the world, India, this asset is located in the largest and most active office market, Bangalore, and the top performing sub-market in the city, ORR. And third, this acquisition brings to the REIT stable cash flows with strong embedded growth. ETV leases have a 9.7 year whale, contracted rental escalations of generally 15% every three years, and a mark to market on expiry averaging 34%. Notably throughout the pandemic, and as testament to the quality of this trophy asset, Rental collections at ETV were a resilient 99%, matching the performance of REIT's robust rental collections. Further, multiple estimates by leading property consultants indicate that occupier demand will continue in the ORR submarket over the coming years. We plan to cater to that resilient demand and further grow the assets operating income and distributions through the addition of 3.1 million square feet of on-campus development at ETV, 36% of which is already pre-leased to JP Morgan on a built-to-suit basis. And very importantly, the acquisition is accretive across all key financial metrics, including NOI, DPU, and NAV per unit. On a pro forma basis for the six-month period ending September 2020, the transaction results in a growth in NOI by 28%, NDCF by 27%, increases NAV per unit by 3%, and leads to a DPU accretion of 4.2%. Let me now take you through further details of the transaction, including the pricing and our financing plan. Embassy Tech Village is being acquired from three shell selling shareholders. Embassy and Blackstone entities, and an existing third-party shareholder. Total enterprise value for the ETV transaction is 97.8 billion rupees, or 1.3 billion US dollars, which is at a discount of 4.6% to the average of the two independent valuations. In our base case, we propose to finance this acquisition by issuing equity of circa 60 billion rupees through a combination of an institutional placement of circa 37 billion rupees and by way of a preferential issue of units to third party selling shareholders of circa 23 billion rupees. We also may refinance a portion of in place ETV debt of up to 36 billion rupees 
through coupon bearing instruments, which may be a combination of REIT level and SPV level debt. The proposed equity issuance will significantly increase the REIT's public float from the current 38.4% to 42.6%, excluding the preferential allotment units, enhancing liquidity and potentially facilitating inclusion into select benchmark global equity indices. Given that this acquisition qualifies as a related party transaction under SEBI regulations, we have ensured that the transaction meets all the related party safeguards and is in line with leading global standards. Most notably, Embassy REIT is purchasing ETV at a discount of 4.6% to average of the two independent valuations obtained as per the REIT regulations. The independent directors of the manager have reviewed and approved the proposed ETV acquisition and have recommended it to public unit holders. HSBC Securities delivered a fairness opinion to the independent directors of the manager to Embassy REIT, opining that subject to the assumptions and limitations of the scope, the proposed value of the acquisition is fair from a financial point of view to the public unit holders of Embassy REIT. There is no acquisition fee payable to the manager for the proposed ETV acquisition and the acquisition will require the approval of the simple majority of unrelated unit holders and the approval of at least 60% of the unit holders for both preferential allotment to third party shareholders and the institutional placement. As related parties, Embassy Sponsor and Blackstone Sponsor Group will abstain from voting on the ETV acquisition resolution. In conclusion, we believe ETV is a difficult to replicate asset with significant scale and high quality, that the transaction is accretive for existing unit holders across key metrics, and we believe that the acquisition presents a compelling opportunity for Embassy REIT. We are now happy to address any questions from the unit holders, and in a moment we'll move to the Q&A session. Mike, as I mentioned at the start of the meeting, unit holders who wish to express their views, ask any query may do so in the chat box enabled on their screens by clicking on the communicate tab. Unit holders will need to mention their full name along with their DP ID and client ID or their folio number as the case may be, along with their questions. A relevant person from the manager shall answer your query during the meeting. Please note that Embassy REIT reserves the right to limit the number of unit holders asking questions depending on the availability of time at the extraordinary meeting. We will now answer some pre-registered questions received from our unit holders as per the instructions we provided in the unit holders notice dated November 17, 2020. The first question is from our unit holder, Ms. Shraddha Podar. What all are you proposing to acquire as part of the ETV acquisition and what is the consideration? Further, what is the rationale for this acquisition and why are we going ahead with it now? I would request Mike Holland, our CEO, to take up this question, please. Over to you, Mike. Yeah, just checking that I'm audible. Um, okay, well, I think that many of the points around what are we acquiring have been covered uh, in my comments earlier on and in the video, but just to summarize, um, we're acquiring uh, 9.2 million square feet uh, integrated business park uh, in what we believe to be India's best performing office submarket, the Outer Ring Road or ORR Bangalore. Uh, that 9.2 million square feet breaks down into 6.1 million square feet of operating and leased to an occupancy, uh, committed occupancy of greater than 98% to 40 uh, tenants. Um, most of whom are international companies, 88% of the rentals come from international companies. So in addition to that 6.1 million square feet that we're acquiring, uh, there is 3.1 million square feet of future office development on uh, this 80 acre campus. 
1.1 million square feet of that is pre-leased to JP Morgan with rents commencing in, in 22. Um, and the balance 2 million square feet of office development gives us that highly accretive, lower risk on-campus development. Um, and the, I think you, you asked uh, what consideration. So uh, the purchase price that we uh, mentioned before, uh, uh, approximately uh, 9,800 crores, about 1.32 million US. And that's a discount uh, of 4.6% to the two independent valuations. In terms of your second question, the rationale for the acquisition, why are we going ahead now? Um, you know, we, we believe this is a, a best in class asset in a market which has a very low 2% vacancy. It's super high quality tenant rosters. Um, it's large scale, it's predictable income from the fully committed offices. So the 6.1 plus the 1.1 JP Morgan bill to suit that's 7.2 million square feet, um, which we've got you know, high visibility to. Um, and, and high levels of accretion on the on-campus development. We see it as uh, absolutely complementary to our existing portfolio in a different sub-market in India's uh, leading uh, office market. Um, we, so, so both in terms of product, we see it high quality in terms of tenant, geography. Um, it's accretive on all the metrics that we mentioned, this 28% uh, increase in NOI. 4.2% uh, DPU uh, and 3% NAV uh, accretive. And you know, the question of, of why now, we're positive on the medium and long-term uh, potential uh, for Indian office because it's clear that the use of technology across the world is only increasing. Uh, and many commentators believe that this will increase the tasks that are being carried out in India by our type of occupiers, and that's uh, positive for our business. Um, we're clear that these large-scale business park properties providing what we refer to as the total business e ecosystem provide the most attractive office environment for these types of occupiers going forward. Um, and, and third, because aligning the, the three diverse existing shareholders so as to be able to secure a 100% interest uh, for this great long-term asset is something that can be achieved only very rarely for such a large scale, high quality um, accretive asset. Um, so I, I hope that that, um, that addresses the two questions that, that you raised. Thank you very much for that, Mike. The next question is from our unit holder, Ms. Lata Vishnoi. Given that this is a related party transaction, how have you ensured independence in the price discovery process. Also, is there any acquisition fee payable to the manager for this acquisition? I'd request uh, our deputy CEO and COO Vikash Kadloya to take this question up, please. Over to you, Vikash. Sure, Ritik. Good morning, inholders. So given that it's a related party transaction, uh, since we received the ROFO offer in November of 2019, we enter into arm's length negotiation with the sellers, including the MSC and Blackstone sponsors. We believe we have followed leading global practices during the process. So let me give you a flavor. Mike did mention this earlier. One, we obtained uh, independent valuation reports from two valuers and the price that is at which we propose to acquire ETV is at a 4.6% discount to the average of the, these two independent valuation reports. Uh, the deal has been reviewed uh, and, and approved by the independent directors on the boards of the various committees, which is the investment and the audit committee, as well as the board, independent directors of the board itself. And they have recommended it to the unit holders for their approval. Uh, third, we did obtain, while it's not regulatory required, we obtained a fairness opinion from HSBC Securities, who have appoint, opined that the acquisition is fair to the public unit holders from a financial perspective. Uh, so, you know, they have also ratified the deal in that sense. And last but not the least, we do put up this deal before the uh, unrelated unit holders for this uh, for our approval through a simple majority, where both Embassy and Blackstone sponsors on the resolution number one today will abstain from voting. So in that sense, we believe this transaction is in the best interests of all unit holders, including the public unit holders. And uh, the price that at which we propose is arm's length 
uh, in nature. Lastly, from a manager perspective, there's no acquisition fee paid to the manager. So that kind of syncs up with the overall alignment of interest uh, to the REIT and to the public unit holders of the REIT. Uh, Ritwik, over to you, please. Thank you for that, Prakash. Um, the next question is from our unit holder, Mr. Piyush Agarwal. What is the proposed financing plan for the acquisition and what are the timelines for the targeted funding? Secondly, what is the preferential allotment of institutional placement? At what price is the preferential allotment and the institutional placement proposed to be made? I would request our Chief Investment Officer, Sachin Shah, to take this question up, please. Over to you, Sachin. Thanks, Ritik. Uh, the aggregate value of the transaction is 9,782 crores, as Mike mentioned. However, the net acquisition cost is roughly 9,650 crores. It factors in various customary adjustments, such as transaction expenses, security deposits, and cash, amongst others. Of this, approximately 2,307 crores will be in the form of preferential allotment of units to the original landowners who have 40% ownership in the Embassy Tech Village SPV. We're looking at a base case, 3,700 crore institutional placement to qualified existing and potentially new unit holders. We'd also look to refinance the existing debt of up to approximately 3,640 crores, for which we have assumed a base case 7.25% coupon bearing debt. In our base case, the acquisition is being financed with roughly 6,000 crores of equity or 62% of the total consideration. We are targeting completing the institutional placement and preferential allotment within December while there is a long stop date of January 31st, 2021. The pricing for the pref allotment will be at 356.7 rupees per unit. This is already established. The institutional placement will be linked up to uh, linked to the price of the unit during the two week period prior to the launch of the placement on which a discount of up to 5% can be offered up to, uh, this is pursuant to SEBI regulations. Thanks, Rithik. Thank, thank you for that. The next question is from our unit holder, Christine Monis. Why are you taking a resolution to raise leverage up to 35% when the pro forma leverage will be only around 22%? Also, why are you proposing to raise a resolution that has equity of up to 8,000 crores? Will you raise the whole amount through an institutional placement? I'd like to request our CFO, Arvind Maya, to take this question up, please. Over to you, Arvind. Thanks, Vidik. Uh, good morning to all unit holders. To start off, yes, the gross debt to net asset value post this acquisition will be about 22%, considering the pro forma capital mix for financing this acquisition. However, I want to guide you towards a few key movers in terms of a debt mix. Uh, number one, we currently have projects which are under construction, totaling 2.7 million square feet, along with two Hilton hotels uh, and other infra upgrades across our parks. Secondly, if this acquisition gets approved by unit holders and gets completed, then the ETV assets have an under construction portfolio of approximately 3.1 million square feet, as well as two Hilton hotels. Additionally, we will continue to assess the right capital mix between equity and debt for funding any future acquisition opportunities. Uh, as you're aware, any debt raise in excess of 25% of a gross asset value requires unit holder approval as per REIT regulations. Considering the above and keeping in mind our stated debt strategy of reaching a max debt level of 35% of a gross asset value in the medium to long term, <clears throat> we are proposing this enabling resolution to be approved by unit holders. Similarly, based on the pro forma capital mix assumed in our disclosures uh, made in the transaction document, we had assumed an equity raise of, of approximately 3,700 crores for this acquisition. We will retain some flexibility to raise more equity for this transaction if required. However, we do not intend to raise the full 8,000 crores in this institutional placement. This is again an enabling resolution for further equity during the next 12 months for any future acquisitions or for any defined use of proceeds. Hope this is helpful. Back to you, Ritik. Thank you very much, uh, Arvind. We will take that as the last question. I trust that we've uh, responded to all your questions, but in case we haven't been able to answer any questions due to time considerations, we will respond to you separately at the earliest on your registered email IDs. If you do require any more clarifications, you're welcome to get in touch 
with the investor relations department of embassy read at ir.embassyofficeparks.com. I will now pass the, the meeting over to Deepika Srivastava, our compliance officer, to take over the compliance matters and resolutions. Over to you, Deepika. Thank you, Ritik. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The presence of the unit holders have been dispensed with. The appointment of proxies is not permitted. 150 resolutions per Parvat Adani's authorization letters for representation by 150 corporate units entities in respect of 62 crores 59 lakhs 14,647 REIT units representing 81.11 percentage of the embassy REIT's power were received by the manager. The inspection document mentioned in the notice of the extraordinary meeting shall remain open and accessible to the unit holders for inspection during the continuance of this meeting by mentioning the name DMAT account number, email ID, and mobile number to compliance at embassyofficeparks.com. The unit holders can request for an extract of the same as well. The notice dated November 17, 2020, convening this extraordinary meeting along with the transaction document dated November 17, 2020, have been provided to you in advance of this meeting. With your and chairman's permission, I shall take them as read. In compliance with provisions of SEBI REIT regulations, your trust has extended remote voting through NSDL to its unit holders to transact the business set out in the notice of extraordinary meeting. The said facility was available from December 7, 2020 to December 9, 2020. Ms. Rupaldi Zaveri, Practicing Company Secretary, has been appointed as the scrutinizer for scrutinizing the remote e voting facility as well as for the e-voting at this extraordinary meeting in a fair and transparent manner. Those who have not cast their votes by availing the remote e-voting facility and who are present in this virtual meeting will have an opportunity to cast their votes through electronic voting system. Unit holders may please note that there will be no voting by show of hands, so anyone who has cast their vote can do so through the electronic voting system in the manner described in the notice of the extraordinary meeting. The results would be declared after conclusion, after considering the e-voting during the extraordinary meeting and remote e-voting already done. The results would be submitted to the stock exchanges within 48 hours of the conclusion of this meeting and would be placed on the website of the embassy read and NSDL's website. The recorded transcript of the meeting shall also be made available on the website of embassy read. With your permission, I shall now take up the resolutions which require unit holders approval. Item number one of the notice to be passed with simple majority relating to consideration and approval of ETV acquisition for an enterprise value of 97,824 million. Item number two of the notice to be passed with simple majority relating to consideration granting of authority to borrow up to 35% of gross asset value of embassy read and matters related thereto. Item number three of the notice to be passed with special majority Relating to an approval of raising of funds through institutional placements of units of embassy read not exceeding 80,000 million institutional investment in one or more placements. Item number four of the notice to be passed with special majority relating to consideration and approval of preferential issue of up to 65,579,400 units of embassy read at a price of 356 six per unit per unit the text of the resolution along with the notes is provided in the notice circulated to the unit holders i now request the chairman of this extraordinary meeting mr anush puri for his concluding remark to you sir thank you very much uh, dipika uh, with this the extraordinary meeting of embassy reit comes to a conclusion i want to thank all the unit holders for their presence and involvement my sincere thanks to the board of directors, the management team, and to all unit holders present here today. And to those who couldn't join us today, but have been a part of our growth journey. I now authorize Deepika Srivastava, company secretary, to conduct the voting procedure and conclude the meeting. Unit holders who are present in this virtual meeting and who have not yet cast their vote can do so now by availing the remote e-voting facility. The e-voting facility shall remain open for the next 15 minutes to enable the unit holders to cast their vote. 15 minute timer starts.
The requisite quorum was present throughout the meeting. The results of the extraordinary meeting will be announced by Embassy REIT on or before December 12, 2020. Thank you very much. Yeah. Over to you, Deepika. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank all unit holders for joining today's meeting. This concludes today's extraordinary meeting of Embassy Read. Thank you. Stay safe.